to Idaho Bigfoot. Once again, we're discussing one of the three major senses almost every animal and almost every human on Earth has, the sense of hearing. This is part three of a series of episodes discussing the potential senses Bigfoot has. Now, I want to make a disclaimer. I am not an expert on biology, nor Bigfoot. And in all honesty, no one is truly an expert when it comes to Sasquatch or Sasquatch research. Unless we get someone living with a group of Sasquatch and documenting every behavior and idiosyncrasy of the individuals and the group as a whole, much like Jane Goodall did with chimpanzees, no one really knows much about Bigfoot. Some, like Jeff Meldrum, are experts of footprints and anthropology, but none of us know all there is to know about these creatures. If we had our own sightings, we're basing everything we know or believe off of what we saw. Or if we haven't had our own sightings, we're basing everything we believe off of what someone else has seen. Trusting that not only are they telling the truth, but they are telling it the way it happened. And that brings me to my next point. I'm obviously assuming that Bigfoot exists. I know many have their own theories about its existence or are super skeptical. Everything I share here is my own opinion, but I do my best to be as factual as possible. I also want to apologize for any background noise. I'm out in the lodge today. If you have watched Jeff's Outdoor Adventures, you know where I'm at. But if not, it's a little building outdoors here where I film a lot of my videos. It's basically my uh, studio. Problem is, is that there isn't really any insulation in this joint, so... You can hear the uh, roosters crawling outdoors, and unfortunately, there's some flies that found their way inside here. So I've been trying to kill as many as I could, but they're still buzzing around, and so every so often you might hear them. Uh, so I do apologize about any background noise. Just got to deal with it, I suppose. So anyway, enough of all that. Let's get right into today's video. Uh, why is this an important topic? Well, I've discussed in the last two videos that many individuals conduct their research wearing perfume, cologne, aftershave, uh, makeup, wear clothing that is not only very colorful, but is also washed with smelly detergents and fabric softeners. Uh, some might be petting dogs or have cigarette smoke, gasoline, food, or any number of odd, out of place, or pungent scents on them, and don't tend to pay much attention to being stealthy in general. Uh, for me, I believe wholeheartedly that Bigfoot can see hear or smell you, especially if someone else could. So if you are trying to stalk and find a Bigfoot, potentially nature's stealthiest inhabitant, why not do your best to be as quiet, hard to see, and hard to smell as possible? Now, I know that some just go with the theory that Bigfoot can just sense you no matter how much you try to evade its detection, but to me that's often more of an excuse than an explanation, but to each their own. Now, there is one group of individuals that I want to start talking about, as they are very well known to be very quiet. I'm talking about the Native Americans or the First Nations peoples. Now, each tribe was different, sometimes drastically different, but in general, they have been considered some of the stealthiest people out there, at least when hunting. Uh, when Europeans came to the New World, they were often amazed at how Native people seemed to be able to walk through the woods almost without sound. One resource I found said this, It seems backward to most of us, but indigenous peoples knew that walking silently means walking toe to heel, not heel to toe. The native way of walking was to take smaller steps, no more than three feet or so, and place the toes on the ground first. The weight of the body should rest on the back leg. This allows you to check the noise value of the ground you are about to step on. This way, if there is a twig hidden under the leaves, you will feel it with your toes before it makes much of a noise. This enables you to change your footing if needed. If the ground under your toes appears and sounds like a quiet step, you can now put your heel on the ground and transfer your weight to the front leg. Once your toes are on the ground, roll the outside of your foot until your heel is firmly in place. This is the exact opposite to how most of us walk, and it will take some practice if you hope to acquire this valuable skill. Practice on a wide range of surfaces. Once you think you have the hang of it, get a friend to turn their back on you while you sneak up behind them. See if they can hear you, or if they can tell when you are within, quote, attack range. While walking heel to toe is considered to be the main stealth skill, there are many other things that matter. For example, no matter how silent your feet might be, if you are singing, whistling, talking, or even breathing loudly, you will be heard. This is one reason why native people learned the songs and whistles of native birds. They could signal one another with natural sounds that few would suspect. <laughs> 
Being aware of noisemakers on your person is another factor to consider. Your equipment, shoelace ends tapping on your shoes, nylon pants rubbing against your legs, a clanging water bottle or rifle, all make noise that, while it may not be much, will sound like a trumpet in the quiet of the woods. Most people walk with their backs hunched forward and their heads up. This will naturally put most of your body weight on your front foot, which is what you don't want. Learn to bend at the knees and keep yourself as low as possible while still keeping the upper part of the body erect. Yes, this means leg strength, so you might want to consider doing more squats to increase the strength of your fine muscles. While you are bending at the knees, keep your hands and arms at waist level. Use your hands, palms down, to balance and further help distribute the weight. In the dark, or even in places where the light level is very low, this can help you avoid smacking low tree branches. Picture the form. Knees bent, torso erect, hands spread wide between rocks or trees. This is the perfect position to pounce upon unsuspecting prey, or move quickly if you are suddenly ambushed. If you have ever watched a horror film and watched someone find a great hiding place, only to give it away with their labored breathing, you will find that this is a true fact, not just a movie stunt. Of course, you need to breathe, but be aware of how loudly you are breathing. Many people find that they can breathe more quietly with their mouth open. However, if you have bad breath, this too can signal your location, scent being a powerful tool for animals, as we talked about in the last episode of Bigfoot Senses. A toothpaste or mouthwash that is a variation of mint should work just fine, as mint is a natural scent. Also, you need to make sure that your nasal cavities are as clear as possible. I have some friends who tend to be just fine with being very congested and it likely has a lot to do with their diet. Uh, but at the end of the day, sometimes allergies can play a part, sometimes your food, uh, sometimes it can be a variety of different things hitting you all at once, but if you are constantly sniffing, and you're uh, constantly breathing through your mouth to the point where you're heavily breathing, you can't really breathe through your nose, you need to blow your nose. So let's get back to the article. Another trick that indigenous people used was not staring directly at the person or animal until they were within range and ready to attack, believing that humans and animals could sense somehow that someone is watching them. Many people who have reported a sighting have said that they felt like something was watching them. Uh, I just talked to a guy the other day who watched one of my YouTube videos. If you know who you are, hey buddy. Uh, and he said that this was something that he experienced after he had gotten off his ATV, he felt like he was being watched. So that's a very creepy feeling. I myself have experienced this multiple times. You do not want to feel this feeling. It is not good at all. So getting back to the article, if you are not in a position to shoot or you simply want to avoid being seen and your prey looks at you or even in your general direction, do not assume that you have been spotted. Eyes will quickly catch movement, but objects that are stationary, not so much, as we discussed in depth in the episode about sight. Depending on your skin tone and what your purpose is, you may want to consider lighting. This is why most native people painted their face and upper body, even their horses, with streaks of black and dark red. This helped them appear more like shadows. If you have very light colored skin and will be in a low light area, you might want to cover it with some streaks of dirt or camo face paint. While an animal might not recognize a shadow, a person surely will. Be aware of your position in the sunlight to avoid projecting a human shadow. Many native tribes tried to keep the sun on their back as they knew that most animals and people will turn their faces away from direct sunlight. While you most likely could not smell a deer or a person unless that person was using perfume or lacked deodorant, until you're almost upon them, almost all animals have a better sense of smell than you. If the wind is chasing your scent directly to your prey, even an average deer can smell you coming from half a mile away. All the stealth in the world won't help you if your prey can smell you coming, as we discussed in the episode about the sense of smell. So there will be a link to that article. I did interject a few times or change the wording a little bit, but it's a very, very good article, and I recommend you read it. So let's get to the abilities that animals and humans have in order to find a likely medium to expect in a Bigfoot, assuming that they are real. First, it's important to figure out how the auditory system works in humans. So the auditory system is composed of very delicate, complex structures that work together seamlessly to send a message to the brain. It can be split into three sections, the outer, middle, and inner ear. Beyond the inner ear is a central auditory system, where sound is sent to the brain for processing. The outer ear consists of the pinna, 
external auditory canal, and the tympanic membrane, otherwise known as the eardrum. Sound waves are reflected off the pinna and directed into the ear canal. Once in the ear canal, the sound waves resonate on the canal walls and vibrate the eardrum. The middle ear consists of three tiny bones, the ossicles, and two thin muscles, tensor tympani and stapedus, that support the ossicles. The middle ear space is an air-filled cavity with a thin tube that runs into nasopharynx. As mechanical energy travels down the ossicles, the footplate of the stapes pushes into the oval window of the cochlea. The cochlea is a snail-shaped organ that is encased in bone and filled with liquid. As the oval window is pushed in, the fluid inside is displaced and delicate hair cells are activated. The hair cells then send the message to the auditory nerve. The central auditory system starts at the auditory nerve and leads up through the brainstem into the temporal lobe where sound is processed. Now the normal human hearing range refers to the range of frequencies that the auditory system can detect, and it's measured in hertz. The normal human hearing range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The human ear has a highly dynamic hearing range, but we are most sensitive to sounds between 500 hertz and 4,000 hertz. Sound beyond the lower end of the audible range of human hearing is called infrasound, while high-frequency sounds above 20,000 Hz are called ultrasonic sounds. Human beings cannot hear these sounds, but other animals can. Dogs, cats, and dolphins can hear high-pitched sounds up to 160,000 Hz. That's why your furry friend can hear a dog whistle, but you can't. The dynamic range of human hearing expressed in decibels goes up to 130 decibels, at the lowest end is audiometric zero, or zero decibels. Audiometric zero is the lowest intensity of human hearing ability. Anyone with normal hearing should be able to hear a pure tone sound at this level at least half the time across the full frequency range. You first lose the ability to hear higher frequency sounds. As age-related hearing loss progresses, you start having trouble with low frequency sounds too. Imperceptible changes in hearing start early in life. Laboratory testing has found that some children can hear sounds as high as 28,000 hertz, but the upper limit of hearing ability for most kids is typically 20,000 hertz. The wider hearing range most young people enjoy starts to narrow in the teens. Most people cannot hear tones higher than 17,400 hertz after 18, and your hearing ability to detect higher frequencies than 15,000 hertz starts to diminish at 25. While men and women have virtually identical auditory systems, there are significant differences in hearing ability due to social and environmental factors. Women of all ages generally hear sounds higher than 20,000 Hz better than their male peers. However, older women are more prone to hearing loss at low frequencies than men. One possible explanation is that men are more likely to work in jobs or have hobbies where they are exposed to loud sounds, while women are more likely to seek help for hearing loss. Now, What about apes or monkeys? Well, for monkeys, the ability to hear well can mean life or death. Vocalizations from rival bands or warnings from its own alert the area to the presence of predators or intruders. Sound familiar? Hearing well allows a monkey to pinpoint a potentially lethal sound and identify it as friend or foe. Most monkeys seem to hear at the low range like humans, but they can hear an octave higher into the ultrasonic as well. Now, I found a very detailed study that I will link below, but here's a chart provided in the article showing how a variety of species did in the test that they did. To quote the article, Although most of the audiograms are complete, testing was not carried out at frequencies low enough for a low-frequency hearing limit to be established for the baboon. The shape of the audiograms is typical, with more gradual changes in sensitivity at lower frequencies than at higher frequencies. Eight of the species have good overall sensitivity with thresholds below 10 decibels, SPL over several octaves, and their low frequency sensitivity is similar to that of humans. All hear approximately an octave higher than humans do. Only the patas monkey seems unusual with poor sensitivity overall, no thresholds below 10 decibels, and much poorer hearing at low frequencies with no responses obtained below 125 hertz. Audiograms for three species of New World monkeys, squirrel monkey, owl monkey, and marmoset, are illustrated in figure 4. As with the strep serenes, the entire audiogram is shifted among the frequency axis toward higher frequencies compared to humans. Only one species of ape has been tested for auditory sensitivity, a chimpanzee, pantroglodytes. It is illustrated in figure 5 along with the audiogram for humans. As with the other primates, its high frequency hearing is more sensitive and its low frequency hearing is less sensitive compared to that of humans. 
Because both of the determinations that contributed to the average for chimpanzees were made using sounds presented via headphones, the low frequency hearing may not be comparable for test presenting sounds via loudspeakers due to difficulties in calibrating headphones at low frequencies. The question we must address is whether this variation is unusual, and whether the differences among primates are peculiar to primates or are part of the larger pattern of variation observed among mammals as a whole. So that was a lot of words there, but at the end of the day, the chimpanzee and species of monkey hear higher frequencies better than we can, but we hear lower frequencies better than they can. As far as gorillas go, very little has been done from what I could find. Actually, it's pretty sad, but it stands to reason that since visibility is often restricted by a dense vegetation, hearing is important for gorillas to locate one another and to detect danger. So it would stand to reason that they have about as good a sense of hearing as we do, give or take. Now what about deer? Well, many claim that because they have spooked deer before without trying, that Bigfoot couldn't possibly be any better, and it makes no sense that no one has captured good evidence for its existence. Well, trying to understand how well a deer hears, or sees, or smells is an extremely daunting task. We can't just ask them, did you hear that? So instead, we have to rely on either behavioral observations or some type of advanced technology. Thankfully, in the past few years, there have been a couple of research studies conducted that can give us a good idea of how a deer hears. However, before we get to these studies, let's think about the structure of a deer's ear. The large external ears, or pinnae, of the deer work somewhat like a satellite dish. They help to amplify the sound, just like cupping your hands behind your ears, but because they can move independently of each other, they also help the deer evaluate what is happening in all directions. We've all noticed how deer continually shift the direction of the ears, and simply by watching the ears, a hunter can get a good idea of what the deer is thinking. When traveling together, deer often keep track of each other by listening. So if you see a lone deer, watch its ears. If it frequently cups one or both ears to the rear, you have a good bet there's another deer following. Similarly, if a deer is looking directly at you, don't be too concerned if its ears are moving in different directions. However, if it has both ears cupped toward you, you've been spotted and he's trying to get all the information he can. By comparing the signals that each ear receives, the deer can accurately locate the source of the sound. But the question still remains, is a deer's hearing better than ours? With the large external ears, you might expect this to be the case. However, two recently released studies cast some doubt. A couple of years ago, David Osborne and Larry Markington at the University of Georgia discovered an unpublished study by Mr. Arthur Stadelman, who researched the hearing capability of deer confined to a soundproof room. They compiled the data from his research and reported some interesting results. They described the study as follows. The deer were conditioned to seek and accept food whenever it heard a sound. A machine called an audiometer was used to create a wide range of sounds varying in intensity, loudness as measured in decibels, and frequency, tone measured in hertz. The intensity at each frequency was increased until it produced a positive response from the deer. When repeated over time, this procedure provided some understanding of what sound the deer was able to hear. Deer and humans apparently can detect sounds of low to moderate frequency at approximately the same intensity. A cat can hear much fainter sounds than either the deer or humans across a wide range of frequencies. Deer probably detect high frequency sounds better than humans. These findings may shock many hunters who have formed opinions about the hearing ability of deer based on personal experiences. Dr. Kenneth Reisenhoover at Texas A&M University, who used some sophisticated technologies to generate audiograms for five adult deer, recently substantiated this research. His results were very similar to those from the Georgia study. Evoked potentials, responses, were detected and recorded at intensity levels of up to 85 decibels in a frequency range of 0.5 to 12 kilohertz. Evoked potentials from the five deer tested indicated that the range of greatest hearing sensitivity was between 1 and 8 kHz with a marked peak centered at 4 kHz. This research all seems to indicate that a deer's hearing is really not that more acute than ours. A deer knows you're in the woods simply because you are making some noises that aren't supposed to be there. Scientific tests have proven a person with a normal hearing ability and a deer with normal hearing ability can generally hear the same types of sound at the same levels. Not so with all animals, though. For instance, we've all heard of dog whistles that tweet at a frequency undetectable by humans but easily heard by dogs. Dogs, cats, elephants, and other animals can also hear much weaker sounds even at frequencies we both can hear. That doesn't mean deer don't depend on their hearing as defensive weapons. 
They do. In fact, deer hearing is probably as important as its sighting ability. Deer are instinctively wary of humans, even if they have never or seldom encountered a human. However, when a deer does encounter a human, they gain learned knowledge of human behavior. The more interaction, the more learning it gets, and the more deer relies on what it has learned to be aware of when a human is near. Most of a deer's hearing defense is learned. They aren't born knowing what humans sound like. They quickly learn the sounds that humans make. A young deer, yet to have gone through a hunting season, even in our area, may have had very few encounters with humans before the actual season. However, deer who have survived a hunting season or more become more educated each year and more adept at being evasive. The point is, deer, especially the older deer most hunters would like to harvest, are best at detecting and heeding their man-danger alarms. So let's examine, from a deer's perspective, what sort of man sounds trigger those warnings. All animals make some amount of noise. For the most part, these noises are quiet noises. And even louder sounding noises, such as the raucous call of blue jays or woodpeckers pounding on trees, are natural noises. Noises deer hear all the time and generally recognize as non-threatening. Humans make it easy for them. Humans tend to be extra noisy. It often starts at the hunter's vehicle. Deer often hear traffic near their home territory. They get used to vehicles driving past, but how often does the vehicle stop next to their woods? How often do they hear car doors slam or tailgates drop? Not often. And when other man-made clues occur soon after, even distant sounds like that can put them on alert in the future. Some hunters even unload ATVs to drive and park at or near their hunting area. What's that got to sound like to an already alert deer? Even walking hunters sound like walking hunters to deer. Walking hunters almost always stride along purposefully, making crunching sounds as they walk through dry leaves or crop stubble, create whisking sounds as they move through taller grass, and plodding sounds on mostly bare trails at a steady pace as they go from point A to point B. Hunters aren't going to be perfectly silent, but should work towards two objectives. Be as quiet as possible from the minute you park your car, and minimize, as much as possible, sounding like a human in the woods the closer you get to your hunting spot. Now what about the bear? After all, grizzlies, brown bear, polar bear, and even black bear fill the same niche in the environment as a Bigfoot would. If real, Bigfoot and the various species of bear in the North American continent compete both for the position of top predator and for various food sources depending on the location. Well, bears probably hear in the ultrasonic range of 16 to 20 megahertz, perhaps higher. The grizzly's sense of hearing is far more sensitive than man's, writes Thomas McNamee in Grizzly Bear. And it is undoubtedly an important aid in the pursuit of such subterranean prey, such as gophers, ground squirrels, mice, and voles, which grizzlies locate blindly and pounce on with noteworthy accuracy. At 328 yards, writes Shepard and Sanders, the bear can detect human conversation, and it responds to the click of a camera shutter or a gun being cocked at 54.7 yards. Now what about wolves and dogs? Well, wolves have one of the best senses of hearing among wild animals. Their ears can hear frequencies up to 80,000 hertz or 80 kilohertz, much better than the human upper limit of 20,000 hertz. This allows them to pick up on sounds that humans can't even notice. Wolves can generally hear sounds within the range of 45 hertz and 80,000 hertz. Compared to the human range of 64 hertz to 23,000 hertz, wolves are much better listeners. When hunting, wolves will use all of their senses, hearing, sight, and smell particularly. While wolves have great night vision, their vision starts to get blurry after 75 feet. When tracking a prey that's farther away, they'll rely more heavily on the other two senses, hearing and smell. If they can hear noises up to 10 miles away if there are no obstacles or objects in their way. That's one of the reasons why wolves are such great hunters. Wolves use their hearing in their communication. Wolves use vocal communication a lot, from growling and snarling to moaning and howling. Different ways to vocalize mean different things. This can be used to assert dominance or to show that they're submissive. Because of wolves' great hearing, they can easily differentiate the different forms of vocalization and hence respond accordingly. Dog's sense of hearing is truly remarkable considering they began life with sealed ears and able to hear at all. When it comes to the sense of hearing, your dog's ability to hear far outranks yours. Even with floppy ears, their hearing is more sensitive and versatile than yours. Dogs with ears that stand upright have even better hearing. The anatomy of your and your dog's ears is very similar with a few exceptions. One difference lies in the ear flap or pinna. Your ears are attached to this side of your head facing sideways. Dogs' sense of hearing rely on their 18 muscles at the base of their ears. Compare that to our six ear muscles. 18 muscles seems like a lot, but consider that the cat has 30. This allows them to move their ears to pick up sounds in many different directions. 
Think of these muscles as tiny instruments moving an antenna, or radar, in the direction of the sound. They can turn, raise and lower their ears, even tilt them in different directions. People, on the other hand, have limited ability to move their ears. Most cannot move their ears at all. How many people do you know that can wiggle their ears? So to sum this up, the sense of hearing is a very powerful tool in the toolbox of many animals. Unfortunately, many of us just walk outdoors without really making any sort of conscious effort to remain quiet. And I've certainly done that in the last couple videos I've made because I was just placing some trail cams. I wasn't real intent on being super quiet. But even then, it's important not to yell, to hoot and holler, or, as I've seen some people out there, uh, play music, you name it. Interestingly enough, I cannot say I believe that Bigfoot is right between us and deer. In fact, I believe it's right along us, deer, and apes, and right in between wolves and bears. Maybe a little bit closer to us than them, but at the end of the day, I see no reason why they don't have super sensitive hearing. If you think about it, they don't have hearing buds in, they don't wear headphones and listen to music and party all night. Uh, they are actually in a very quiet environment. So the moment any noise is made, they'll pick up on it, which means that being very quiet and very careful is important. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. This has been a long enough video as it is. So all I'm going to say is that, you know, if you guys could share this video wherever you'd like by clicking the share button down below and then copying the link, that would really help out a lot. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be wonderful as well. Or if you're listening to the podcast on Podbean, you know, be able to share it there. Whatever you can do, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, please feel free to comment down below your thoughts. Remember to keep it civil, guys. Comment sections can get very angry very quickly, and I don't allow that. So uh, keep your comments civil, but feel free to share what you think down below. And I will link all of these articles down below so you can see exactly where I got my information from so you can check it out yourselves. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.